Wow, this thing is looking so big now. Wait, what's this? 5k. Huh. Is that some sort of house number? Weird. Yeah, not bad. I'm pretty happy. Wait, what's this? 5,000. What is that? Hmm. Huh. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Wait. 5,000. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 5,000. What's going on here? Welcome back everybody to Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. Thank you everybody, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I can't believe, what is that? What is that big ugly pit behind me there? Some sort of creeper hole. I better go and patch that up because those things are ugly. But 5,000 subscribers, I can't believe it. Look behind me, I've been working on the right hand tower here. Look at this thing, it's absolutely enormous. That goes all the way, right above my head there, goes all the way up to build height. And I haven't really even started on this other sister tower on the other side of the river yet, just a basic starting structure going on there. Let's just wander around this thing and I'll take you around inside and we'll have a look because last time we saw this thing, the backside of it wasn't even finished, but I wanted this to be a bit more complete now. Let's go up to the front door here. We've got this sort of a portcullisy thing going on in the front, which I quite like. You can imagine that going up and down if ever they needed to open up the front section of this giant monstrosity. Oh, look, 5K. Let's go inside and we have this entryway. This might be where maybe some horses come through or something like that. And there's a little guardhouse here, not very well decorated, but somewhere for the guards who are guarding this front entrance here. Let's close that up. We don't want any unwanted visitors. Uh, oh, hi. Um, <laughs> the guardhouse for the guards to rest in while they're out here guarding the front entrance. In here, we just have this majorly, that's not the right word, large area is what I was looking for. Uh, large open area here. And this back section here allows you to see the sunset, which I quite like. And you'll see a lot more of that sunset as we walk around this giant thing. Look how big it is. It is huge. Okay. If we go around this way, there's this front section here with a bit of a landing here going off to a staircase which goes down. And this will go down to some other buildings and things that surround this area too. You can see we've got a portal over here which is currently unlit and the original bridge which we built the last time. And if we look up, you can see this thing. Oh, that's not... No, that's, that's not the best angle for this build, to be honest. Um, let's let's find some better angles. But let's walk around this way. I'll show you what I've been working on on the inside. We've got a couple of little sections in here, mostly unfinished. Not too much decoration has been done yet, just enough to make me satisfied. We go up this staircase here, and we end up on this first landing here. We have some pillars here, so it looks uh, a little bit maybe Greek or something, but a bit more deserty. And out here you can see this wonderful little view. Up this way, we have another little section here. Mm, nothing much to look at here. But around this side, you can see quite a large space in here as well, a bit of decoration on the interior walls here. But as we go up this staircase here, you can see another landing here. This is the one that I really like. Um, I think this one too, that I, I like both of these because you can watch the sunset. It's about to come down while we're on our tour, which is quite nice. But as you can see, there's a lot of different levels in here and the backside is really quite open to give you that wonderful view. If you head uh, this way, you can go up to this other balcony sort of area here with a bit of a water feature and a giant creeper face as well. Uh, and this section gives you a great view of the other tower. Once that's finished, you'll be able to see it going all the way up to cloud level up there and you'll get a wonderful little view of whatever we build out here and I don't even know exactly what little buildings and all sorts of things we're going to build around in the desert area here. But let's wander back inside this way and uh, look we're getting that sunset mm, this way. Yes. Oh, there's another another section out here I forgot. Another little outdoor balcony section 
uh, which I really love. So let's go up here. I'm going to try and make it in time for the sunset. We've got this staircase, which goes up and around and around. We've got two directions to go here. One again goes out to a little viewing port and then we get another sunset view from here. And this side goes up and around. Oh, hello. Another little viewing spot up and around this way. And then it snakes around this way. Again, we can go off in either direction. Up here, we've got another landing. Not too much of a view up here. And over this way, we've got these big pillars in a giant room here. And again, we've got these great views of the sunset. The sun in Minecraft is really weird because it just goes behind that line, that artificial skyline. It's, it's really weird, isn't it? Why can't they make it just go down and disappear behind the trees properly? I don't know, but that's the way that sunsets work. Here we've got a giant tower reaching all the way up to build height. Did I miss some blocks? That looks a bit wrong. I'll have to go and revisit that. But if we go through this way off to the side around here, we can actually go up this tower. So if we escalate these stairs here, we are up on yet another layer. Sunset's gone now, but this is another viewing area. Even up the back here, you can see as far as the eye can see, we've got the desert and the snow bit of a weird combination. And again, great views of whatever it is that we build around here. I don't know. I'm going to need some suggestions and ideas and feedback. But in here, you can go inside this tower. And if you go up this staircase all the way to the top, you get, you get to this, this floaty light orb thing with one piece of glass missing that, oh, it's, yeah. It's definitely missing, which I need to put back in. And this just brings your eye up to this area. If you happen to see it, maybe from, oh, I went into the cloud. Maybe from across this way, you'd be able to glimpse this very strange light um, as if this is some sort of obelisk or something at the very top. This level here is build height. Let's see, I've got a couple of blocks here. We cannot build, I'm trying to place, we cannot build higher than this glass block. So this is really quite fantastic that we've got a build going all the way up to cloud level and there aren't any clouds coming very, very quickly, but you'll see that my head will actually go through the clouds if I stand up at this height. And how do we get down from here? Well, there is one quick and efficient way and that's by using our feather falling four boots. If you use these and just jump, oh, uh, that was actually not the best example. Let me show you exactly what I was trying to do there. My head is definitely in a cloud now, but this is what I wanted to show you. I can jump from up here, which is build height and make it all the way down to here. And I just lost a couple of hearts of damage with my feather falling four. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now we're in 11W49A, which means we still have access to the creative cheat key B and I can use this to fly around. So let's just have a look at this beautiful monstrosity that I've built here. You can see how large it is and how many sand blocks I had to go and dig. The desert behind the ravine base right now is absolutely decimated. I've got to build another one of these over here, which will be similar in height and also similar in its oddly shaped configuration, lots of different um, inny and outy bits. You know what I was going for. And it won't look the same. It'll be its own unique build. But when these two are side by side, let's go backwards. When these two are side by side here, you can imagine walking up at ground level and seeing these two humongous buildings, one here and one here, and then making your way in. Oh, hello making your way in to whatever lays beyond. We've reached the end of 11W49A, so let's update ourselves to 11W50A, the very last snapshot of 2011. 11W50A, is it really the last version of 2011? Seems like so long ago, doesn't it? One interesting thing about this version is if I bring up F3 and bring up the text as well, You'll notice that it still says 11W49A up in the top left corner there. Whoops, um, looks like probably Jeb forgot to rename the version when putting this release out. And this was never corrected. It was just left like this because what's the point when another snapshot is just gonna follow it and replace it? Well, while we're here in this special 5K celebration version, I suppose you could call it, I thought we would do something a little bit different and wander around the world and Take a look at some of the special features, quirks, bugs, and things that we have done along the way and see how they've survived the test of time.
It probably makes sense to start right out here back at spawn. So I've come back out here to spawn where of course our original forest accidentally burnt down when I made this. This is a lava source and a water source flowing into each other. Normally, whenever water touches lava, you would either get stone or obsidian, depending on which one touched which one. But here we still have lava flowing directly into water and meeting up at this point, making nothing. Now, of course, if I disrupted this, it would suddenly turn into either uh, cobblestone or obsidian. But this should stay like that forever because it'll never receive a block update as far as I know. Inside the house here, we have a couple of things too. Way, way back in the beginning of this series, these minecarts here were actually placed down as minecarts with chests inside because minecarts used to have an inventory. And then over time, I left them here. And when the chest was removed from the minecarts, they just turned into this. And the real question was, what happened to their inventory? Well, I, I honestly don't really know. These things just behave like regular minecarts and I can get myself in and out of them. I can't really access an inventory anymore because that feature no longer exists. So unfortunately, whatever I put in these minecarts, I think is now long gone. Upstairs here in the spawn house, we have a couple of things too. These are the lit furnaces and we've seen these in other places within the world. This happens when the game doesn't swap a lit furnace back to an unlit furnace and then you're able to pick up and place down the block and this furnace will always stay lit. These were two that I naturally had when I was around caving in this area and decided to place them down here to see how long they'd last. Across the way and through this door here, this is the original, the very first mining hole that I dug out way back when this world was still in InfDev. And if we go in here, we can see some of my original chests with items in here too. You can actually see these pork chops, which are single stacked items because that was before food would stack. But uh, down here this way and off to the left, going down this hole here. Oh gosh, why didn't I dig this out more? Doink, 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 doink. At the very bottom of the world here, you can see this lava and right here is where I removed one of the lava sources and this is a void hole. Now this changed a couple of times throughout InfDev where the lava was first not there and then it was there and then it sort of disappeared again. But at the moment, this is access directly to the void. Now what's interesting about all of these chunks here in the InfDev terrain is that these were all generated before caves were added to the game. So there are actually no caves anywhere here and anywhere that you dig around is just gonna be solid blocks. So if I dig down, we can probably find, there it is, we can probably find the void directly beneath our feet. This entire section of chunks for however many thousand blocks around us just has straight down access to the void, no bedrock. You can see around me that the entirety of the spawn chunks is now one big ugly swamp. And you can tell that because of the dark watercolor and the dark grass color all around me. And that's a shame because when we first moved into this area, it was lush and green and all of these big trees all around us here used to be covered in bright green leaves. And as you can see, a lot of the leaves in these trees are actually mixed up. We have some birch leaves here, some regular oak leaves here. We have some spruce leaves here. And that's because when these trees were all originally generated, all of these blocks had different metadata values. The metadata value was basically indicating how far away each leaf block was from the trunk. And that means that as leaf variations were added to the game later on during beta, these leaves here with their original data values retained those original data values. And now the data value for spruce leaves, what, which was contained in this original leaf block here, now makes this appear as a spruce leaf and the same for all of the others. So we get this very mixed up leaf looking effect all throughout the original InfDev area. This place looks nothing like it used to. Right at the end of the InfDev era, we moved out here to what we now call the Alpha House or the Alpha House area. And we played Alpha all the way through, building up this area, building farms and buildings all around us. But actually the only really weird thing out here that I could remember or that I could find was when we found this triple chest bug. And this triple chest bug involved placing water sources in all of these block locations here and then placing chests down. And you were able to place double 
double chests right next to double chests, which you aren't actually allowed to do within the game. And when you open the double chest, you get this really long inventory, which now doesn't seem to work anymore. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't look that way, but you can actually see, can you see that black outline there? There are actually chests here, which were part of that original formation that we made. So can I access these chests? Yes, yes I can, and this one, this is doing what I expected to see. It's got this merged inventory which has caused the GUI to spread out from top to bottom. And what's happening here is we're actually accessing the contents of two chests at once. It's pretty weird, but it's it's doing it, it's doing it for sure. What is really strange is why why does this chest work? I think that this one works because no, no, I, I, I don't know. Accessing it on the right causes you to get the normal chest inventory. Accessing it on the left causes you to get the previous chest inventory and this one or this one and this one. I, I don't know. I don't know. But the question is, why don't these chests render at all? I don't know. It's weird. Right here in the Alpha House bedroom, we were able to place these reed blocks right here on top of this one here, which is uh, wood, and this one here, which is a bookshelf. And the way we were able to do that is by using fire. It, it says up here, it says, reeds in Alpha 1.2.0 can be placed on top of fire. And what that means is that by lighting this block on fire and then immediately placing the reed, this would cause the game to skip the block check. And the block check, by that I mean, when you try and place down a block, the game will check to make sure that it's a valid placement. If there was fire there, it would skip that check and the, the result would be that you could place blocks in the wrong locations. That's how we got these reeds right here in these two little slots. I'm out here at the Mob Wrangler, which we built so that we could wrangle mobs down into this hole down here and collect all of their drops. And as you can see, it's turned into another ugly swamp. But that's not what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you was down here below. Down here is the collection area where you can pick up all of the mob drops. And what's happened to all of the chests? Well, they've got lighting glitches. Just about all of them, in fact. For some reason, the lighting doesn't work on these chests and you can still interact with them normally, but for whatever reason, no lighting. Minecraft Alpha also gave us access to the nether for the very first time where we built this, this snowball spherical nether hubby thing right here in the nether. But that's not all we did here. Right around this way and down this corridor, we also used an exploit to open up the nether ceiling. By planting crops inside the nether right underneath the bedrock, we were able to grow them up and then remove the bedrock right above. So if I climb this ladder, I wanna see if anything up here has changed. Looks like everything up here is just as we left it, but what I really wanted to check was build height. I wanted to see if it was possible to place blocks down here yet. No, unfortunately not. Ah, the Beta Lake area, so many fond memories around here. While we were here talking about the 5k milestone, I wanted to mention a couple of things. I don't promote my own channel too much, I just rely on natural growth and the support of you wonderful people, and I wanted to mention that if you wanted to support me financially, you can. There are a couple of ways to do that. You can join Patreon by clicking on the links down below, and if you join Patreon, if you're supporting me, your name will appear as a producer credit on the end screen of every single episode, so long as you're supporting me through Patreon. Isn't that cool? And if you don't want to do that, but do want to send me a little thank you, there's a super thanks button at the bottom of the each YouTube video, which you can click and send a little donation through to put a smile on my face and just let me know how much you are enjoying this series. But you don't have to do anything like that if you don't want to. Just by watching this series, you're helping out. And by sharing this series with your friends, sharing episodes or sharing the playlist, then you're also bringing my series to a new audience and helping me grow in that respect as well. So thank you if you are doing that as well. There's also a Discord server that I run if you want to join that and come and hang out with me and some cool people who hang around and chat. Sometimes we hang out on the voice chat, sometimes we play mini games. There are a couple of little servers that get run in that community as well, which are free to play. So come on in and join the fun if that's what you want to do. Now, let's wander around this Beta Lake area for a bit and see if we can discover any of those weird quirky things we left behind. 
I think one of the best known features of this house is the space lamp up here, which is surrounded by these orbiting floating buttons. And this was done by placing buttons down on uh, the flat surface beneath each of these blocks where the buttons are rendered. And this would cause the buttons to place themselves in an odd way in this weird floating formation. There are a few more just down here as well. We managed to get buttons onto this chest, onto this crafting bench, and also onto this bookshelf here, which isn't actually that unusual. But what's unusual is that these three buttons, they're all linked. So if you press one, you press all of them. Oh no, oh no, I've, I've broken the button. I've broken the button. Uh, we're going to go back to a backup of this world. <laughs> I definitely did not mean to touch that. We also have some six-sided pistons here, which are quite unusual, but I think they fit in really well as a building block, so it's a shame that these things were never added into the game more permanently. Out here in the kitchen, we have floating rails. This was done by placing water and then immediately placing another block, in this case, rails, which again would bypass that block detection thing within the game, which would usually prevent you from placing a block like this down in a location like that. Down here, we also have this, which is actually a lever, just like this, but this one is rendered all wrongly. <laughs> it's rendered this way because we placed it again on, I think on the glass block here, we placed it and that caused the game to place it down in this really peculiar orientation. And I'm really quite surprised that it's lasted this long, but it, it it's weird, isn't it? Up here in the pool room, we have these. These are the impossible torches, and they're impossible because it's impossible to place a torch on top of a note block, just as it's impossible to place a torch on top of a crafting table. But we were able to do this by causing the, the game to glitch in how it would place these torches. Right behind here is a stair block, and up here is this slab. So if you were to attempt placing a torch on the bottom section of this slab here, what would normally happen is the game would try and attach it to this block here, but because it can't, it will attach it to this block down here, regardless of what it is. So it was possible to use this trick to place a torch on top of this crafting table, as well as these note blocks. Up here in the mansion master bedroom, there are a couple of things to look at. At the end of the bed here, we have more of these merged chests where the merged chests don't render in properly. But if we look inside, I can assure you they definitely are glitched chests. Notice how it also doesn't make a chest opening sound, but this one does. That's, that's something I only just noticed now. We also have these glitched buttons here along the front. Obviously, it's not possible to place buttons on the front of chests as we know. Over here in the library, we have this chest up here, and this chest just contains all sorts of different special things from around when we were playing during the beta era of the game. We have the 64 stack of diamond pickaxes, we have our first squid milk up here, some maps, and over here we have the locked chest. If you remember, the locked chest was added during beta 1.4 for April Fools, and it still exists in the game as this feature, but Obviously, the lock chests don't appear anymore. There's just still code for them within the game. So they can exist here in this chest and they can exist in the world and they can still exhibit their original behavior. They just aren't supposed to be around anymore. But what's interesting about them is if I just pop down onto the ground here, if we look in the inventory, you may remember that the original chests got a size reduction. In the world, when you place down a chest, it's no longer a full block. You can see the outline square here is larger than the actual texture of the chest. So when you look at them in the inventory like that, let's use my axe for efficiency, you can see that the chest is actually much smaller than the original chest texture, which is right here next to it. So let's just place that one down and I should be able to place a locked chest right next to it. And you can see it's still much larger. Now this thing should theoretically just disappear on its own, but I can still break it and get a locked chest back. But what happens if I just leave it here? Let's, let's see if it disappears. Oh, and there it goes. Overall, I think that took about a full minute to disappear. So it's really sad that they still do disappear within the world, but oh well, what you gonna do? These over here are half doors, and we were able to make these by placing down doors next to a cactus, and the cactus would break only the bottom half of the door, leaving the top half floating. So by cleverly structuring some of these doors in this way, we were able to build up this fancy looking trellis. 
by exploiting that block bypass glitch that we used before by placing water down and then immediately placing a cactus, we were able to create this cactus tree. And of course, like I've said before, the game is supposed to check whether the block you're trying to place is valid or not. But by using that quick block placement trick, we were able to bypass all of that to create our own cactus tree. When the strongholds were first added to beta 1.8, there was a bit of a glitch which would cause only the central staircase of the stronghold to generate within the world. So we reset this chunk here, forcing the stronghold to generate in this location and revealing itself to be only just this staircase. Then we dug out this chunk around it so that we could see it in all of its glory. This same glitch affected villages as well. Other than the well, which is the central point of the village, no structures would form causing a lot of roads and lamps to appear but otherwise the village was an absolute ghost town. When we got access to ice blocks, we were able to place them here in the nether and create flowing water in the nether, which is so strange. And using this bug, I was able to construct this waterfall here, right here in this cavernous area of the nether, complete with our very own nether lake, made of actual water. In the ravine, we have a couple of interesting items as well. Most notably, probably these, which are the negatively stacked items, golden apples, ender pearls, food and diamonds. And if I were to dispense one, let me just throw this away because I've already got one on me. But if I dispense out one of these golden apples, you'll see it lands on the ground and I can pick it up. And then if I open up the dispenser again, I can place it back in. It seems like I forgot to place one back in. And as you can see, the stack keeps reducing by one, but because it's negatively stacked, it's counting backwards into the negative. So it just keeps on going and going and going infinitely. And now, oh, I picked them all. There we go. There's even more on the ground there, as you can see. So if you were to eat one of these, you'll find that it doesn't disappear. You can just eat them infinitely and keep on going, which is wonderful because these golden apples are absolutely brilliant. This way down here as well, we have the vault room. The vault room is full of all sorts of things that we've collected in the more later versions of the Minecraft beta era, mostly. In here we have all of these, which are end portal blocks. Over here we have some negatively stacked coal and some negatively stacked ender pearls. Around on this wall, we have a negatively stacked coal inside the furnace, which means that you can virtually smelt until these stacks run down to minus 127, then they roll over to 127 and then count down to zero. So they're pretty special. In here, we have infinite golden apples as we just saw before. Here we have another one of the lit furnace blocks and some more lit furnaces here in these chests. Right here, we have discontinued vine metadata values, which we were able to get by placing vines in different positions without, throughout the world and then using shears to get them. And this will not work in future versions. Over on this side, what do we have? Silk Touch, our first Silk Touch and Fortune pickaxes. Here it's possible to get Silk Touch and Fortune on the same pickaxe by getting a very special uh, enchantment combination coming up in the enchanting table. And you can also see here, we have all sorts of blocks which Silk Touch would allow us to pick up, including some blocks which are pretty unusual. The Double Slab block, the Spawner block, the lit redstone ore block and the lit furnace, all of these are normally impossible to pick up except in uh, beta 1.9 pre-release 4. Over here, the first pickaxe we got using the enchanting table at maximum, which was 50 levels. We only got efficiency for Unbreaking 3 Silk Touch 1, which is pretty crappy, <laughs> but we did it anyway. And we have uh, enchanted tools where we can we could enchant the shears with feather falling. In fact, everything here has feather falling one on it, including the flint and steel here. Over here, we also have fully enchanted armor. Each item has feather falling one, which is obviously impossible to get in current versions, but the first time that enchanting was added, every single enchantment that was applied to any item happened to be feather falling one. So we got all of that. And of course, in the back here, oh, we have, we have apples, but in the back here, we have each of the different variations of spawn eggs, 
which we were also able to access by accessing the creative menu with our cheaty B key in the last version. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of today's episode. So once again, thank you to everybody for bringing me to this amazing 5K milestone. I've really enjoyed this series and I will continue to enjoy making it and I hope you will continue to enjoy watching it as well. Once again, thank you to my wonderful patrons for supporting me. I love you all so much. Thank you all very, very much. I'll see everybody in the next episode. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye bye. I forgot to mention, I will make a current world download available if you're interested. If you join my Discord, there'll be links available in there. Bye-bye.